Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video. Get this thing situated where I'm looking at myself into the viewer. So yeah, I make these videos on a camera, a camera, <laughs> and uh, I thought I'd make a video. I haven't made a video in a while about what I have been reading in my afflicted state. As I mentioned in my last video, I've not been feeling well, not sleeping due to, to my my affliction, my. Uh, Attica. I can't pronounce it, you know. That little S C I A T I C A. Statica. To Statica. And as I mentioned, I'm start physical therapy on it. I've been doing exercises since December, and I'm doing the same exercises. And, but uh, what can you do? So I haven't been sleeping. I wake up around three, four o'clock in the morning and I don't go get back to sleep and I limp around all day and and when I'm not getting enough sleep then my my tinnitus, my buzzing in my ear gets really loud and I get depressed and I get cold to the bone and I just become miserable but uh, the Lord gives grace and you know plus you know I'm getting old and things get to you when you get old and but I continue to read and write in my diary in a state of my of misery I'm on page 232 for the year 2022 it is March I started my March diary I don't think I showed you my March diary yeah I have all my physical therapy appointments marked out for the month of March I go on this coming Tuesday I have a physical therapy session at 7 a.m. and then I meet my uh, therapist psychologist at 1 o'clock p.m. And, and then I see my th physical therapist on the 10th and it goes on Carol leaves for the state of Washington to visit our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and their two girls Marika and Lydia on the 31st so life just keep continues, even though that Ukrainian war is just makes me sick. I would just like love to live in a world where there's no war. There's no phantom. There's no dictatorships. There's no civil strife. Racial, racial inequality. Republicans and Democrats always fighting for power. Why can't we just live in peace? Why can't we just love one another? <laughs> I don't know. So I've been writing in my diet. Well, I've been dozing all morning because I've been taking, I thought what I would do maybe to help me sleep was take an extra dose of Xanax, a whole tablet. But what it does, it knocks me out. And then in the mornings I feel drugged. <laughs> I feel I can't wake up. But Carol left for church. I was dozing in the living room. And I had gotten out to read. I've been, I think I showed you this book. I've been reading off and on The Glory of God and Paul. Text, Themes, and Theology by Christopher W. Morgan and Robert A. Peterson. So I've been reading that. God's Glory and Worship is what the th chapter is this morning and then chapter 4 the glory of God and the resurrection 1st Corinthians 15 so I've been reading that and then I'm still reading Jonathan Edwards 
spiritual writings and the classics of Western spirituality. And I was reading on the Pacific Vision. Uh, I think the last thing I read says here, and Paul, this is on, uh, this section is called Excerpt from the Portion of the Righteous, uh, a sermon he, Jonathan Edwards preached here in, in America in 1735. The saints in heaven shall see and converse with Christ. Uh, yeah, I never thought of that. He says something. Um, he says... It, the means by which God shall grant this vision of himself, which is the Holy Ghost, as tis by the Holy Ghost that a, a spiritual sight of God is given in this world, so tis the same Holy Spirit by which a pacific vision is given of God in heaven. The saints in heaven are, are as dependent on God for all their holiness and all their light as the saints on earth. All is from God by his Holy Spirit as it is here. They shall have this specific vision of God because they will be full of God, filled with the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the pure river of the Holy Ghost is the pure river of water of life that proceeds from the throne of God and the Lamb spoken of it in the twenty second chapter of Revelations. Six the effects the effects of the vision there they are that the soul thereby shall be inflamed with love and satisfied with pleasure. A. It shall be inflamed with love. The soul shall not be in an inactive spectator, but shall be most active, shall be in the most ardent exercise of love towards the object seen. The soul shall be, as it were, all, all eye to behold, and yet all act to love, all a flame of love. The soul shall be as full of love as it shall be of light, and both of it shall be as full as it can hold. The understanding will be in its most perfect act in beholding, and the will will be in its most perfect act in loving. This love will be a perfectly as such as it ought to be. It shall be perfectly humble. Then the soul shall be in its place at all times, adoring at God's feet, and yet embrace in the arms of his love. So that's what I'm kind of reading in Jonathan Edwards and his spiritual writings and the classics of Western spirituality. And I'm still reading Rudolph of Saxony, The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 2, Volume 1, Chapters 1 through 57. I'm on Chapter 40 in this volume. The final volume, volume four, comes out the end of this month in the life of Jesus Christ, Rudolph of Saxony. So, yeah. And I have been reading, uh, I got, I have, I think I showed you this book. It was a special from Princeton. The Life of St. Teresa of Avila Biography by Carlos Ayer, Lives of Great Religious Books. St. Teresa Avila was at the same time as St. John of the Cross. St. John of the Cross was her spiritual director, was her spiritual director for her nuns and her, her, uh, and this is in, the, the book is The Life of Jesus Christ. The Life of St. Teresa of Avila is a book, and she wrote, it's called Her Life. It's in her collected works. This is volume one of a three-volume edition of the works of St. Teresa of Avila. And in it, the first volume is her, the book of her life. <laughs> and uh, in here is the book of her life, spiritual testimonies, and Willikies. So I've been reading that. Those are the kind of things I've been reading in the morning. I've also been reading Beaky's 
Reformed Systematic Theology, Volume 3, uh, Spirit and Salvation. I grabbed, instead of Beaky, I grabbed this one. I do look at this once in a while. Theoretica, Practical Theology, The Works of God and Fall of Man by Peters Van Mansfield. I really haven't been reading this. I've been mainly reading Beaky. And when I can read Systematic Theology. As far as... I also have been reading along with St. Teresa of Avila is in context. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, and Their World by Mark O'Keefe. Still reading this. It has nice illustrations in it. I, I read it along with St. Teresa of Avila. A biography of her book. Uh, as you'll know, I've been reading at the Book Nook, the library used bookstore where I volunteer for several months and a couple of years. Motherless in Brooklyn by Jonathan Latham. I volunteered there Friday and I was not feeling well. I couldn't get comfortable. My leg was killing me. And I had brought a, I had bought brought along to read uh this book and I couldn't get into it so I got out Motherless in Brooklyn and I finished it I find after three years I think I finished Jonathan Lathan's Motherless in Brooklyn I finished reading it I, I want to read uh, Solitude of Fortress of Solitude by Jonathan Latham next I read his Dissident Gardens I've read his Motherless Brooklyn and now I want to read, the next thing I read by Jonathan Lathan is uh, Fortress of Sol Solitude, I think that's what it's called. And I'm going to read that one next. I think it's called that. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to read that next. I also, I, I ordered, I... I showed you a little book by Caesar Avera. A portrait of a landscape painter. I finished that and then I ordered his other little book, uh, Veramu. This is translated out of the Spanish by Chris Andrews. It's just a, it's really more, more like a little pamphlet than even a, a novel. But I've been reading this off and on and, uh, so I've been reading this. And then I got from the book nook, uh, Philip Dick, U-B-I-K. I got this at the book nook last Monday. And I read half of this by Philip Dick. And then I was going through my books and I found, trying to find the doubles in my library to get rid of books and I had a double of this book A New Life by Bernard Malibu Malamud he was a writer at the same time as Philip Roth and Saul Billows around the same time period this was first published in 1961 he was a American writer, his novel is primarily about Jewish immigrants to America, the characters. But this novel is about a... The New Life is about a man who was a drunkard from New York City, grew up there, and he decides to start a new life. And he goes to a... a uh, a college in, on the west coast in Oregon and he, start, he teaches English composition and it's all about his starting a new life. It's, it's one of those novels where it's about a professor and it's, a, it's one of those college professor kind of novels about academia world and all the people, the professors and their lives and their families and their characters. Anyway, I, I've been reading this and I 
I'm almost done with this. I've been reading this. I collect his writings for a number of years, but never really read him. I've read a lot of Saul Billows or a lot of John Updike, but I've never read him, so I started reading this because I had a double and I started reading it. So, yeah, so I'm reading Phil Dick, U B I K, and uh, reading this little book here. Also, I've been reading at night, Ravished by Beauty. I kind of, it's kind of like, I don't read this in the mornings, but when I go down the lower level to go to bed, I read something, all kinds of things. But I read this last night, and I've been reading it off and on. Ravished by Beauty, The Surprising Legacy of Reformed Spirituality by Balin, Balden C. Lane. Uh... I got this out because I noticed when I was going through it, he has a chapter 5, Jonathan Edwards, on beauty, desire, and the sensory world. And also there's a, and uh, Jonathan Edwards, the classics of Western spirituality, spiritual writings, there's a section here called On Beauty by Jonathan Edwards. Uh beauty uh, the beauty of Christ the glory of Christ he has a sermon here Jonathan Edwards the sweet harmony of Christ and he goes into the beauty of God the beauty of Christ and so that's why I got that out so those are the kind of things I've been reading in my afflicted state Feeling the weight of the world, the Ukrainian war, nuclear holocaust, political turmoil here in America. But we're coming to the end of winter. We're going into spring. And so maybe things will get better. Maybe one day I'll wake up and the world will be in utopia. Anyway, that's what I've been reading. That's what I've been writing in my diary. I'm on page 332. Reading out the glory of God and Paul in the mornings and reading Jonathan Edwards and Rudolph of Saxony. I also have been reading this book off and on, Jonathan Edwards and Deification, Reconciling, Reconciling Theos and the Reformed Tradition by James R. Saladin. So these are things I read in the mornings in context, I showed you this one. And the Life of St. Teresa of Avila, a biography. What he does, he does in this book, he goes into the history of the book that St. Teresa wrote about her life, the via, the life of St. Teresa of Avila. He goes into a biography, why it was written, historical context. The, he discusses the mystical theology in the book and he shows how the book has been interpreted and understood throughout uh, its history. Like he goes into like, um, oh, the life of the Via in art, chapter six, the enlightenment in modernity, skeptics, seekers in psychoanalysis and fascists, chapter seven, post mystical, Intermillennial via uh, things like that. Right now, I'm on the part where he talks about the mysticism of the via, the mysticism that you find in the life of Saint Teresa of Avila. How does she set forth her mystical life? So it's kind of interesting, and so that's why I'm reading. That's why I'm writing. That's why I'm going through in my own head. It's like I said. It is March the 6th, 2022. It is 10.05 here in West Michigan. The wind has been howling. It's supposed to snow and rain this week. And uh, life just continues. So I'll sign off. I hope you have a good week. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for the Russians. Pray for mankind. Pray that the Lord will come quickly. 
So I thank you. I haven't responded to any comments yet because I'm not feeling well. But I do appreciate all comments and you're in my prayers. And until next time, I can't think of anything else to say. I got no books coming in the mail until the end of the month. I'm supposed to get the fourth volume of the Rudolph of Saxony and the final volume of the uh, the on the Book of Job by Gregory the Great. I'll show those when they come in the mail into this month. The final volume. It's a six volume uh, edition of Gregory the Great. I can't remember what his exposition on the Book of Job or something like that comes out this month and uh, I'll be showing, I'll getting that and I'll show that in a video this month. So I'll sign off. Have a good reading week. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your subscription. And until next time, bye.